Hey, welcome. Um, this is not my main channel anymore. Um, and what you probably, you're going to be surprised by this video because it's not a music tutorial. If you want those, head over to Groove Window, which is my main channel these days and where I do uh, funk tutorials. I do have this other channel just sitting out here. And uh, I thought as I'm recording certain videos just for myself, um, some of them I may publish from time to time and they may be of use to other people. This one's going to be a comparison of a bunch of microphones that I've acquired. Uh, none of them are particularly fantastic, but as I'm trying to figure out the best things to use in certain situations, I wanted to have a nice unbiased recording of each of these microphones in a similar setting so that I could hear them for myself and see um, which one I liked the best. It's a variety of things from some kind of video things, some inexpensive things, some things I use for live music, vocal mics and things like that, but I'm gonna give them a try and see which one I like the best. I'm in my office, which sonically is not ideal. Um, lots of hard surfaces. There's like no carpeting anywhere, hard walls, hard ceiling. So um, all of that, we're hearing aspects of the room that are, are less than ideal. Now it's worth mentioning um, that for all of these silence tests, I'm not in a completely silent space. It's the middle of winter, our fans and the house are running, and I can definitely hear some of those vents. And so some of that low level noise um, that I've certainly heard from some of the other microphones isn't really mic self noise. It's the ambience of the room. I've got a little bit of fans. There's a little bit of room noise going on here that you can certainly hear in some of these microphones. So to start, what I'm listening to is this Tackstar microphone that I picked up for 30 bucks or something like that. It's a shotgun mic. Um, I've got it right here boomed out of frame, um, just, I mean, whatever that is, 12 inches or something away from my lips. And I've got the low cut enabled, but I've got the boost disabled. So it's just the regular gain signal. I'm going into my Focusrite audio interface via an extension cable. I've got the gain on the Focusrite maxed. I've got it all the way up. Um, and one of the things I want to hear is the self noise of the whole system, but in particular, I want to record to the same interface with the same sort of similar settings and then see how the mic is. So here's a little bit of silence from this microphone. Okay, now just for grins, um, I'm going to edit this out, but I'm going to enable the, disable the low cut. Okay, there's with the low cut disabled. Um, so we have full frequency recording now. It'll be interesting to see how that changes the tone. Um, usually with vocals, you want to pull out that 100 hertz and lower area. I don't actually know where the cut is on this, so um, who knows what the frequency range is, but we'll see what that does. It probably brings in a little bit of lower end to my voice but it has the chance for rumbles and things like that. In a quiet environment like this, if I'm not outside, it may make sense to go ahead and leave that disabled. This microphone comes with a couple of uh, wind protection devices. So uh, I'll edit this in a second. I'm gonna slide the first little windscreen on the microphone. So windscreen number one is now on the microphone and I wonder if it has any impact on the frequency. Sometimes a windscreen will make the high frequencies uh, go away a little bit. Um, usually very hard to notice any difference. Um, so that's with just the basic stock windscreen. So here's the furry. And of course now that's in the frame. <laughs> Nevertheless, no worries. I'm not going to change the position or anything. I'm interested in whether this alters the sonic characteristics of the sound at all. And um, my guess is probably not much. The whole point of these things is to try to transparently alter the frequencies or keep wind noise from getting into the microphone. So there's a little sample right there. Get rid of that. All right, we've swapped out for the Audio-Technica ATR55, um, which I have found to be almost unusable in the past due to self noise and hiss. It's just, uh, I've heard people just say it hisses like a cobra. <laughs> um, Settings, um, this also has kind of a boost. They call it a, a normal and a telly 
setting. It's like supposed to be more of a shotgun. I think what they really do is just boost the signal a little bit. I don't think it changes the directionality or the rejection patterns of the microphone at all. Um, I just think it's a boost. Um, I've got my gain on the Focusrite maxed. Um, so I am at the normal setting, not at the tele setting. And I can already see that this is quite a bit lower than the Tackstar in terms of signal. Um, but I'm guessing there's actually a fair bit of self noise here. So let's hear a little bit of silence uh, with this microphone, the ATR 55. Okay, so uh, similarly, this comes with a little, with a windscreen. Um, I'm not gonna mess with this one too much. I'm not using the windscreen currently. It's just sitting here in regular old boomed up format. I am gonna enable the tele switch, which should boost the signal significantly. Test, test, check one, two, check one, two. Um, looks like I'm still not peaking. It's, um, this microphone doesn't seem to quite have the same hot signal as that Tackstar, and it looks like from the gain pattern that I'm seeing, it's pretty hot now. I'm guessing we've got a bunch of hiss going on. Um, anyways, this is the ATR55 with the tele switch enabled, which I think is just a gain boost. And let's take a little listen to the silence of this microphone. Okay, so that is the Audio-Technica ATR55. All right, I've switched over to XLR microphones. Um, this one is an Electrovoice N slash D767B. Um, it's my standard go-to vocal microphone when I sing live. Um, it's hearty, I can take it out on road shows and it works great. Generally, I'm singing with it right up to my mouth. Um, things like that. So it's not typically used for this kind of more distant miking. It's a dynamic microphone. So it doesn't have, um, you've got to give it a fair bit of gain. It doesn't have phantom power. Um, I've got it, same thing, very similar location as the other one. I've got it boomed just out of frame right there. And um, I can see, I've got the, so I've got the gain on the focus right maxed. And so it's coming right in, and so it's pretty hot signal. I'm guessing that it's relatively quiet compared to some of the other ones uh, in terms of self-noise. Let's take a listen to the silence. That's the first XLR microphone, and let's swap it out for another one. All right, another XLR microphone is up this time. This is the Behringer XM8500, which is sort of their clone of the Shure SM58. <clears throat> and I've heard side-by-side -side comparisons of those. It's got a slightly different, I think a hair brighter sound than the SM58. The SM58 is known as a pure middle of the line vocal microphone, so it tends to be a little bit mid-rangey. Um, this one, I think, has a little less mid, a little bit more low, and a little bit more crispies on the high end. Um, but I've always kind of felt like it's a pretty good microphone, and it doesn't cost much at all. It's really inexpensive. Um, and it'll be interesting to hear the noise floor and the quiet level of this microphone. Because despite their kind of budget category, I've actually found that a number of things from Behringer are pretty high quality. Um, not pro quality, but, you know, if you're on a budget, decent for the money. So, um, let's take a listen to the silence now. Okay. So that's XLR microphone number two. Let's move to another microphone. All right, the next XLR microphone we've got up. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this one. This is an old Radio Shack 
Optimus 33-3017 or something. I don't remember the exact number and I can't see it. Um, yeah, 33-3017. Very similar placement. Um, this one's a little bit different. I think it's I think it's an Electret microphone. It's got a battery, it takes a battery. So no phantom power, but it's kind of self-powered. So I don't think it's a dynamic microphone. I think this is a condenser. Um, probably a little Electret condenser. Guessing this is pretty noisy. It was an inexpensive microphone. I think I've had this thing 25 years or something. I've had it forever. And uh, I think it's pretty bright and crispy, but I think it's got a, a fair bit of <coughs> self noise. Um, I've got plenty of signal, um, seems like. Again, same settings as I had with the dynamic microphones, which was everything maxed over here on the focus right. Looking at the levels, this looks fine. Um, it looks a little hotter than the dynamic microphones um, for the same setting, but that's probably the fact that it's self-powered. Let's hear a little bit of the silence for, from this Radio Shack microphone. All right, be interesting to hear. Um, let's go to the next microphone. Okay, today's final microphone is an, a, a condenser microphone, a big, large diaphragm condenser microphone that would typically be used for podcasting or voiceovers. Um, I picked one up, it's, it's called a BM-800. They're these Chinese-made um, condenser microphones, kind of like um, what a lot of people would use you know, the standards are, are a Neumann U87. This isn't one of those. Those are uh, much more expensive. Um, these are 20 bucks. And for 20 bucks, you get this microphone, a shock mount, at least in this case, got it from eBay. Um, and the reason I get it, got it once again is um, people have made amazing rewirings of the internal. They replaced the internals of the microphone just using the body, which is solid and good. Um, and replace it with this circuit for a mic uh, of this same kind of condenser microphone called an Alice microphone. And you can get the parts for, if you buy fairly high-end parts, 40 bucks or something like that, solder it all together, and uh, I'll do that later. It'll be an interesting experiment. But this is the microphone unmodified, the Chinese BM-800, straight from uh, <laughs> the factory in China where it came from. And I think they have a fair bit of self-noise, but let's take a listen to the silence floor. Okay, now one of the things that I notice is that these kinds of larger condenser microphones like this, they've got a different sonic quality. It's almost like a, like in the old days, a tube amp had this kind of warmth to it as it got pressed a little bit. And I almost feel like the condenser microphones like this, these large diaphragm condensers, have some of that quality. And as they get into higher gains, um, they get, they're, they're kind of nice and they're warm and they've got this, I don't want to call it edginess to it, but like a little warmth and slight drive. Anyway, it's a different sonic quality and it'll be interesting to hear this compared to the other microphones. I think that wraps it up. <laughs> okay, I'm back <laughs> with with one more test. Um, it's going to be slightly different, but I wanted to get this in here as well. Um, what I'm using here is the Giant Squib Audio uh, lav mic. They call it the omnidirectional mic, which is what it is. Uh, all lav mics generally are omnidirectional. They record from basically any direction. And I wanted to get a comparison of the way this sounds compared to all those other microphones that we've heard, uh, just because it's another option I've got. And lavs have a, a slightly different sound than a boom mic. Um, they tend to be a little bit more present, but they also depending on where they are, they can be kind of muffly, and as you move your head, they can really dramatically kind of change. We'll see what that does. I'm trying to do this on purpose. <laughs> so here's a little bit of silence from the Giant Squib Audio Omnidirectional Lav Mic.
Let's call that good on the Giant Squib Audio Lab Omnidirectional Lav Mic for comparison purposes. Okay, to just wrap things up, I've gone in now that I've had all of the recordings, average everything together, and I've analyzed all of those little silence bits um, from each microphone to actually try to numerically see uh, which of these microphones is quieter. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about quality and character in a second, but just talking about pure noise level of the mic or the preamps or whatever it is that was involved that caused a certain baseline level to be there. And I've got a little chart here that sort of shows the results. And in ways it was surprising, um, in ways it wasn't really. Um, on the better end of things from the microphones I tested were the, um, surprisingly, the Tackstar $30 shotgun mic um, was relatively quiet depending on how you measure it. Um, that electric, Electro Voice dynamic microphone was pretty quiet. Um, the Optimus and the Behringer, to some extent, were were both relatively quiet. Um, and then it kind of gets worse from there. That Chinese condenser was was a little louder. The lav mic was surprisingly loud, and that could be. I'm going to talk a little bit about the way I arrived at where I am, um, but it was pretty noisy. And that ATR55. People saying it hisses like a cobra, that's pretty much true. Um, regardless of how you use it, it just seemed to be have a really, really loud um, baseline silent um, level. So uh, anyways, that's kind of the results. I was impressed by that. So a little bit on the way I measured these things. I recorded each microphone, um, doing the best ability I could to have the levels not peak, um, but there was no guarantee that the initial recordings were all the same level. What I then did is I took each section with the a portion of me talking and the silence, and I used an RMS A-weighted average to bring that to negative 24 dB for every microphone. An RMS A-weighted average is supposed to be about the way we hear volume. And by putting them all to negative 24 dB, they should all sound about the same loudness. Now, there's some questions in there. If I had included a larger section of silence, or if I had some outbursts of very loud volume with any of those microphones, it could have thrown the average off. We weren't necessarily con comparing identical portions of audio and then averaging them. So within a, within reason, um, there's a margin of error here. Now that being said, I don't know if that margin of error is 15 dB. I don't know if that's 5 dB. Um, it might be a couple dB. And so I loosely trust these. And just anecdotally, when I listened back to these myself, I kind of agree with what I saw here. I'm a little surprised at the Tackstar. The Tackstar sounded louder to me in my headphones than the Electra Voice or the Behringer, which I thought was pretty quiet. Um, and it's in fourth place here. It depends on how you do it. If you sort it by um, an A-weighted RMS, the, Bar the EV is the quietest, the Behringer is the second quietest, and the Tackstar comes in third quietest. Whereas if you sort by RMS without the A-weighting, um, Tackstar is the quietest, EV is uh, number two, the Optimus, that Radio Shack mic, is number three, and the Behringer is fourth. Um, the top ones are pretty equal. That ATR55 is the worst across the board. The Lav mic and that Chinese BM800 are, are both pretty bad. <laughs> Anyways, some interesting numbers. So just a note on why I'm doing this. I'm mostly doing this for me. I'll come in and I'll do these kinds of measurements from time to time, and then I'll forget. I don't remember which microphone I liked best. And by having this somewhere where I can get back to it, um, I can remind myself, hey, here's what I found out when I did this little experiment. And maybe it's of use to you. I've been really focused on silence, the level of the the quiet level of the microphone when there isn't anything really happening. Um, the other facet of this, of course, is the overall character. And each of these microphones has its own sound or sonic quality. Uh, some of them, like the Tackstar, especially with the low cut enabled, is, has kind of a, a 
mid-range, spiky, a little bit of an abrasive quality um, that got quite a bit better when you um, disabled the low cut and let some of those lower frequencies in, um, but certainly some changes there. I found that the EV, that dynamic XLR microphone, had a fairly pleasing full-bodied sound, a little bit bright um, because it's designed to be you know, put right up to your mouth. It's got a kind of a built-in compensation for a proximity effect um, that when you mic from a distance, you kind of lose, so, you, so it thins out a little bit. Um, the Behringer was was surprisingly, it had a pretty low, um, lower end presence to it that, that maybe was even too much for me. Anyways, uh, they all had their own characteristics, but the, char the, the thing I want to point out here is that a lot of that you can adjust after the fact by using EQ and some compression. I've got the Tackstar um, right now. I do have the low cut disabled because I really kind of liked the way that sounded in the unprocessed recordings. Um, but for fun, um, I'm going to apply my standard level of EQ chain uh, of processing that I normally do on a voiceover, which includes a little bit of EQ um, and some compression to sort of alter the levels a little bit and it sort of squishes things in a little bit. And let's apply that right now. So from here on out, this is my normal processing chain that I might use with a microphone um, where I record it raw and then I alter the sonic quality a little bit in post by using some EQ and some compression. Let's turn that off. Here's with no, uh, no EQ processing, none of that raw microphone. And here's with it enabled. This is me using the fully processed uh, effects chain as it runs through on the voice. And it does make a difference. Um, and depending on the incoming qualities of the microphone, um, you can get to a point where a fair bit of that can be adjusted after the fact. And so I'm less concerned actually with initial quality as long as it's not ridiculous um, and more concerned. It's hard to get rid of silence there are, or noisy silence. There are ways using some filters that you can take a, a picture of the silent and remove that from the overall signal. And, it, and you can do a certain amount with that, um, but it always introduces a certain amount of artifacting I've found. And if you can get a cleaner signal to start with, it's almost always better. Anyways, just a, a quick note on sonic quality. So if you're here for a tutorial, sorry this wasn't the video for you. Um, my main channel at Groove Window, you can still get lots of those. Uh, and if you want to follow along this, who knows what I'll throw up on this channel. It, it, it's probably going to be extremely random, <laughs> which might be kind of fun. Who knows? At any rate, if you're interested in that, follow along. Uh, glad to have you here, and uh, we'll see you next time.